Welcome back to The Rake. Our guest today is a multi-World Series of Poker bracelet winner in the great game of Pot Limit Omaha, including a bracelet in the 10K Championship event, a third place in that same event, and also a second place in the 50K Players Championship. We have Brandon Shaq Harris on the podcast today. Brandon, welcome. Thanks. That was that was a really sad memory for me. <laughs> now we're gonna now we're gonna gonna talk the, about the depression. second, especially or yeah can, yeah, can we just go right into depression talks? <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah well, let's twist the be... knife a little oh, I'm bit. Just I'm just let's, yeah, let's, that was gonna it, be my follow up. My follow up was, but how much did you lose? <laughs> yeah, in my soul, a lot for sure. And like, I don't, I don't look at payout structures because I like to take the like ignorance is bliss approach, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um, and just be pleasantly surprised with whatever comes at whatever place I get, um, probably a second. Um, but I realized that we were playing like a 600 K heads up or something like that. After the fact, I'm like, I probably should have looked and probably should have. Oh, I mean, like, Hennigan, Hennigan's like, Hennigan's too big a deal to probably that care, but, um, I'm sure we could have talked it up to where like second was a million. A hundred percent. Uh, I guess. Are you are you in like the fuck ICM camp then? You're just like don't care. I look at like chip stacks. I guess I don't like. I know I know pay jumps exist, um, <laughs> but I just look at everyone's chip stacks and kind of like I understand how ICM pressure works and these kind of things. But like laddering is is not my forte. I guess um, except when it comes to getting on like sweet podcasts with with babes. I don't know. <laughs> I, I gotta say, I like this guy's style already. This is, this is, it's nice to know that you can still be a successful poker player with this mentality. Um, I feel yeah. less washed up already. I'm like the Mr. Magoo of poker. I'm pretty sure I just like <laughs> fucking, I just like walk around and like happy accidents just happen. I, uh, they just like take place. It's, it's a fun time. It does sound but like, like but like the most common expression for sure when I sit down is like, that's how you win a bracelet. I said, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I love those. Like, I really liked playing mixed games when I dabble in them because the like condescension and the the like little sarcastic comments are everywhere, and they're old crotchety men making them, and I really appreciate it. I feel like those are my people. But comments like that, like, oh, I see, that's how you win a bracelet as you like two out someone. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. My Chicago friends and I were going to do um, uh, seniors event scavenger hunts, and then you get like. You get points if you like, if you pick off somebody's like number one grandpa pin, or they're like, if you get a picture in their CPAP machine or something. Oh my God. <laughs> like you just win bingo then. Oh man, I had that for a birthday one year. Um, I made a photo scavenger hunt where my friends, we went around Borgata and you had to complete a bunch of tasks. And one of them was you had to find like the best exposed ass crack in the poker room. And people came back with pictures and I was thinking perhaps I should have left that one off because how weird is that to have that on your camera roll? <laughs> like they're literally I mean, finding the best cracks. You should see my camera roll. Like <laughs> my camera roll is... Is Should we nightmare. see your camera um, roll? Is that I don't know. I'm not ready to be canceled quite yet. <laughs> I I'm given what we've heard from Veronica Brill last week, I don't think we can do the camera roll on the podcast because I hear you guys yeah. have been having a wild time. Um yeah. I gotta ask, when you, Veronica, and Landon Tice get together, who gets to be the middle spoon? Aww. Um middle spoon. I feel like Veronica likes it's kind of like an Oreo cookie situation where Landon and I are both like giants and then she's the cream filling kind of and she's you know, um she's she's pretty white too so it makes the natural it makes natural sense and also it it sounds pretty delicious um <laughs> like i can visualize the cookie too mm -hmm. and then we can get cookies and bring cookies and then it's just it's cookie uh what's it called uh inception, inception. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's funny too because like you just like reminded me like did you watch the high stakes poker where um gabe called uh he's like thanks helmuth for dressing like a cookie or something like that do you see that I, I have not been watching any of the new episodes this is this is from the new season yeah so like helmuth wore like black and white and 
And it was just really a dry delivery. It was great. It was like, I need to help you for dressing like a cookie. And then I was, I was on my phone. And for like the next three days, I had like Oreo ads on my Twitter title. <laughs> I feel like for the amount that you have cookie on the brain, it might not be the high stakes poker thing that brought those ads up. But uh, Gabe is the absolute best at deadpan deliveries. Mm-hmm. Um, just an all-time legend of the commentary game. He gets away with a lot more than I've been able to get away with, too. I've been realizing. Like, some of the comments he just slides through, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> like, that's, like, old-school high-stakes poker when you could say things like that. And, like, now I feel like we're more rigid, but... Jamie, it know. is better to ask... Seek forgiveness than ask permission. I think okay. I think we gotta, we gotta take you off the leash a little bit. And uh, Yeah, it's fine. And also, I'm fine. I'm not, like, Brandon. I'm ready to be canceled. It's fine. I... I spend too much time i encourage it i would i would like an excuse to get off the internet if you guys could find something to cancel me for um and like i could take another twitter break that would be very good and healthy Mm -hmm. for me i think well i like that you guys are finding uh uh, my puppy Um, puppy. yeah bring ghost on hi a wolf yeah it's my little wolf how is ghost (laughs) diet going oh um her name's Lady, actually. I just call her my little ghost. Oh, okay. but I appreciate that you. I appreciate that you remembered that. That was nice. <laughs> um, she was well. My ex's parents were watching her for a while, and and they gave her, gave her lots of treats. So, um, so we're working on it. I don't know. I just want her to be happy. Maybe I enable a lot of bad behavior. That's, that's the grandparents' job is to spoil. Yeah. Um, but we do go for lots of W's. I just can't say it. W-A-L-K-S is. That's, dude, do you know that I, I I almost, when commentating on ESPN, said they gave the big blind a W. Oh, because really? I'm so conditioned <laughs> to never, ever, ever say walk. And I'm like, a double awesome. walk. Like, oh, I, I wish can't. you would have said that. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, I have some That would be like an immediate gif. That would be like immediate Twitter gif. <laughs> Well, for dog people. I want I yeah. want her to actually spell it out in the commentary. Like W-A-L-K. he got a W A L K in the I'll do line. it. I'll do it for you. I don't I don't care. Um I have Wait. some tips because uh my second puppy, Buttercup, also got a little chunky lately because she is smaller than Crouton and Crouton eats slower than her. So she goes and takes the rest of his food pretty often, like when I'm not looking. Um, so she's on diet food and she's pissed off about it. She has like the not very tasty food anymore where she's had like the puppy food that's super I don't know, yeah. and fatty. So I grinded down these like beef liver treats and put them in a salt shaker and I just sprinkle it on her shitty diet food and she loves it. So now I'll put the diet food in and she looks at me like, where, where's the seasoning? And then I That's put it on and then she eats it. That's <laughs> smart. I did, I did buy the diet food and I've been like cooking chicken and putting my chicken stock on it. Um, but then I put chicken in there too. And I don't know, I, I kind of, I'm kind of sabotaging it, but I fell in love with Ben um, officially when I read his tweet about, um, hating people who, who prematurely, um, yank their dog away from a smell. Yeah. Oh, it drives me nuts. I, I walks, can't stand yeah. it. Like who gets a dog to like, Ugh, I have to take you around the block. Come on, let's get this over with. Like, yep. why are you have, why do you have that animal in your life? If that's, that's how you're going to treat them. Like wh- what is it that you want from your dog? I mean, it's even like, that's almost a little too much. Cause if it's, it's obviously there is something you want for your dog, but you're not interested in like what, what the dog wants at all. Yeah. Like it's just this like one way narcissistic relationship or something. And you're like, Oh, we got to get through this thing that you love. And yeah. it's just a fucking nuisance to me. I like, yeah, I, can't I want you to it. approach that guy who's doing that and just be like, I bet you're a shitty lover too. Right. Most likely he doesn't care yeah. what the other Deserves. animal wants i, I just i just kind of want to like snip the leash just like have a just pair of shears on me at all times and anytime <laughs> i see someone dragging their dog by the neck just give him a snip Aww. roam free little guy yeah uh but he likes the smell he likes it <laughs> likes the sm- like yeah. you spend like 23 hours a day during covid in your home you can't give the dog like one hour where like it's their time yeah. like the dog is just fucking attentive and like letting you live your life all the other time give them like a little something yeah so i always picture you in a thought bubble whenever someone does that shit i picture you in a thought bubble going like, mm-hmm, ben now it's gonna be you're gonna picture jamie in the thought bubble going like mm, bad lover um <laughs> 
<laughs> but I since will. both of your dogs are uh, a little overweight and on a diet, I feel like this is a good opportunity for a weight loss bet. These are very popular in the world oh. self-improvement. So. Wow. Wow. That's wow. a tough one for me. I feel like I'm good with, with bet things, but when it comes to like making something I love suffer a little bit, Mm, that's gonna be rough. I'm better yeah. at depriving myself than than either of my dogs at any time. Yeah. Like I, I lose this bet. I don't know if I lose it to you though. You might be softer hearted than me. That's, and- that's why this is a great bet. Because it's like <laughs> yeah. you guys, you guys actually can't do it. it. You're gonna suffer so much, mm-hmm. which is what what the poker community wants from its gambling. We want to see, <laughs> you know, pain. And Ben like recognizes the immediate parlay for sure. Like, yep. you know, they both fail. They both yep. fail, like collect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Wookie, my uh, Chihuahua Maltese mix, also got a little fat over the winter time, and um, Rada, my wife, put him on a diet, but then she got him a grooming, and like as soon as he got a haircut, she's like, "Oh, he's so skinny. We're gonna give him more food again," and he immediately like <laughs> ballooned up to you know ballooned for a Chihuahua up to eight pounds or something. Uh, yeah. So he's he's back on uh, his diet, which is. I think his diet is like 75 grams of food a day. Dude, that seems really hard when you're like just trying to keep something from gaining two pounds. Like, are you fucking- yeah, it's not, yeah. we're not trying to keep him from getting two pounds. We're trying to keep him from gaining like 0.8 pounds. <laughs> That's crazy. Man. Yeah, it's, it's impossible. And my parents also, he are such a sucker for him. He, uh, he gets treats from them all the time and he gets treats from rat all the time. Yeah. And he gets double fed sometimes too. And I, I'm a bad uh, friend because we'll be playing games and on the zoom call here, like, did you feed Wookie? And I'm like, no, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get Wookie two dinners. <laughs> Oh man. Oh man. Colin's going to kill us if we talk about dogs the whole time. So let's, let's do one poker related question. (laughs) Um, So you used to be really into music. I'm sure you still are really into music, but you had mentioned you wanted to make a career out of it. Um, Can you talk about a little bit about that background and how you found poker um, instead? Sure. So um, trying to figure out how far back to go without all the way back. Just give us from like you were born in. (laughs) Yeah. Well, there was like a point where um, I was like 19 or 20 at this point when I was working really hard on music and my project, like what I was trying to work on was it's like a mixture of like really aggressive stuff or really melodic stuff and a lot of classical piano stuff. And it was supposed to be like a, like a complete immersion of the senses, I guess. Like I wanted to like have a progression of smells that I like associated with like a block of songs, like chimney smoke or whatever. And like, maybe the first whoever get a little bag and like a chocolate covered cherry is how I feel about that. Like this, is what the song would taste like. And there, there would be like a lot of movement on stage. Cause I hate when people just like fucking stand there and we just like flail around like assholes. So it was just supposed to be like a complete sensory overload or whatever. And I had pretty good musicians willing to work with me and I was grinding really, really hard. And I remember I was doing promo for a band and this lady named Layla who works in management, and she was like, oh, this reminds me of this band Muse. And they're like way different now than they used to be, I guess. Now they're like really poppy and really mainstream, all these kind of things. But when they were younger, they there was a lot of like classical stuff and, and they like flailed around a lot. And it's just more like rock and like weirdos, more weirdo stuff. And I'm like, wow, this is, you know, kind of similar to stuff I'm, I'm doing. So they were touring like uh, in Detroit and I'm like a fucking total door I, I when i go to a show i would bring my keyboard and like i'm the guy who waits in line for like 10 hours <laughs> so i brought like my keyboard with me and i was just like practicing and shit and their bus rolled up and they walked out of the bus and they looked at the keyboard and they like walked away whatever and uh at the end of the show they did like a meet and greet i get to the front of the line after the show and i see matt their singer and i'm like oh hey man i just wanted to you know thank you for incorporating um classical and with rock and stuff like that. It's, you know, it's just, it's just really cool to kind of see this, all these things, whatever. I kind of asked him if he'd heard about this cello rock band that I was friends with, because it seemed kind of up his alley. Talked about that. I have a tattoo on my arm. That's part of a Chopin piece. Um, he asked me what, what that was. And he was like, Oh, can you show us the tattoo? Sure. It's it's pretty faded now, but, um, oh, okay. that's, cool. that's that. Um, he's like, Oh, that's one of my favorite pieces, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, we talked for a little bit and then their drummer was like, Hey, weren't you the kid and like playing the 
the keyboard or whatever. And at the time I used to wear like rings on like, on like rings down here, rings up here. And I like, <laughs> like super long hair. And like, I came out of a hot topic or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm like, my girlfriend's going to come pick me up. I'll let you guys do your thing. I'll be outside. If you feel like talking more or whatever, I go outside and Matt sees me and he's like, he's like, Hey man, we're going to go to bar. You want to, you want to come or whatever? And I'm like, fuck yeah, this is fucking great. So we go and he's kind of asked me what I want to do with music. And um, I'm telling him some ideas and he's just like really animated and really into it. I asked them what their plans are for, for their next album. And they were like a three piece. And it sounded like he was like, there's going to be a lot of like three part harmonies and blah, blah, blah. I just all like, it sounded like a pretty big production. And I'm, I'm like, oh, so are you going to find like a fourth person? Or are you just going to use MIDI or whatever? And like nothing about myself at all. Cause I'm, I'm doing my own thing. Like I'm good. He's like, yeah, I think we're going to find, you know, we're going to find another person. I'm like, oh, cool. Like, so what are you looking for? And he's like, well, you, and he's like, I, I really believe in fate. And like, I didn't want to go search for somebody and um, you know, here you are and we pay you real good and you, you, you show you the world. And I'm thinking like, in my head, it's just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> you know? Um, and I'm like, I fucking do this shit for free, man. Just like pay my rent. <laughs> so in a very rare moment of me not being a spaz, I'm like, well, let's just like, you know, let's keep in touch and see how things work out or whatever. He's like, well, we're going to play a whole bunch of shows. You guys should come. So my girlfriend and I went to the next couple shows and the next day, I couldn't say, I'm like, Hey dude, honestly, if that sounds like something you want to do, like I might, you know, seems like something I'd, I'd be interested in trying out. And he's like, well, you know, just a heads up the other two guys, they kind of have an issue with not being a three piece and we've been a three piece for forever. And um, so it's kind of weird, but you know, I, I think we're going to, we're going to try this out at some point. I'm like, cool, you know, just whatever, but I'm down. So we go on the back of the tour bus and he like puts on like this Gregorian chant music, which I was totally into. And um, he's like, have you ever played poker? And I'm like, fucking poker stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but really, I said no. And he's like, oh, we, you know, we're really into poker lately. And he like shows me the rules or whatever. And so we we're playing heads up. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it wasn't very exciting. <laughs> There's lots of checking and showing down, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we just like, we we're listening to weird Gregorian chant music and, and playing No Limit and... Um, and like sharing life stories and then the bus started to take off. And so like we left and towards the end, he's like, well, this is something I want to try out. And I said, okay, well, I'll go home and I'll work on learning your as a shit. Um, and he gave like, you know, we, we all exchanged like contact information, all this shit, whatever. So I went home and I started like learning all their stuff. And I was like trying to learn how to like play shit upside down and whatever. Like, you know, I just want to like, I just want to go over the top of it. And uh, sent out an email a couple of times and didn't hear anything back. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, they're doing their thing and I just work on my stuff. And then a few months later, send something out like, Hey, just kind of curious what, what I should be doing here. Uh, you know, I know you're busy. Hit me back if you can, just so I'm not, you know, just so I have an idea, mm -hmm. like nothing. I'm just like, what the fuck? And you know, I'm a young kid. I'm like 22 at the time. And I didn't ask for this. And I like, I'm a big boy. Like I can take yes or no, but I just hate like sitting around not knowing what, what's going on. You know what I mean? Okay. Being ghosted. Yeah. Yeah. So you got ghosted by Muse who taught you poker <laughs> and, and became a multiple multi bracelet, bracelet winner. Yeah. I'm going to let you keep telling the story because this is a fucking wild <laughs> ride. So, uh, some time passes and they play, they are touring with the cure. Um, and I want to see the cure. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I need to get some fucking answers if I can. So I go, I go to the show and I see their drummer. I'm walking by um, and I give him a wave. He's like, oh, hey, Brandon, you're here. Like, well, what's going on? You should come hang out with us afterwards. And I'm like, oh, well, this, this is good. You know, this is, I didn't know what to really expect. So they play their show and I see one of their guys, their sound guys, Paul. And uh, and I'm like, hey, Dom told me to, to meet up with them after the show. Um, what should I do? And he's like, well, you know, Matt's sulking because there was like some technical issue and blah, blah, blah. He's in the, he's in the van. And I'm like, okay. He's like, just hang out here by this tree and we'll come grab you. Like, All right. So I like, sit by this fucking tree like an asshole. And while like kind of Thursday plays and then like the cure plays and I'm just like sitting by this fucking tree. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is awful. So I drive home. I'm like, okay, well, fuck this. Like moving on. Um, and at the time I also figured while I was learning the shit that I would like start playing poker since like, this is what they do as a bonding aesthetic. Like, I don't want to see, he told me the other two guys were reluctant to have a, a fourth mm -hmm. member. So I figure I just fucking learn what they do. Um, 
So they don't see me as like this dude is trying to infiltrate the band, which I'm fucking not, you know? And then after this, I was pretty let down and I was just like, I can't fucking play music right now. I was just playing a whole bunch of poker. And like, I get a link sent to me. They're doing like a muse Q and A. And um, one of the questions is like, Hey, have you, you ever thought about getting a fourth member? And they're like, Oh yeah, we met this guy in the States and it seems like a really good blah, blah, blah. And you know, we'll probably try this out and whatever. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, so like a year passes and uh, my roommate, Chris started really liking muse. And he's like, Hey, I got us tickets to go to the Metro in Chicago. He's like, they're playing like you should come. I like, fuck that. He's like, he's like, come on, dude. We go wait in line. Tom sees me in line. He's like, Hey dude, you should, you should come hang out afterwards. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Um, and, uh, and, uh, we go see the show and Matt sees me and like, he's like, this song's for you. And he like points at me and he plays like my favorites. Like he knows what my favorite song is or whatever. I'm like, what is going on here? So, um, so after the show, uh, Tom finds me and he's like, Hey, come back here. You know, like, like come hang out or whatever. So, uh, my roommate, Chris and I like go back and Matt sees me. He's like, Oh, there he is. And he comes and gives me a hug. Oh, I saw that piano thing you did. It was fun, blah, 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 all the shit, whatever. I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm, I guess this is good. Um, he's like, we're going to go hang out at this hotel. Uh, you guys should come. So we go show up at the hotel and uh, it's like this big party or whatever. And uh, like in the bar area and I see Matt and I'm like, Hey man, what's going on? And he's like, yeah, I'm like, you want to go talk? And he's like, Oh, we're all talking, man. Like and he's like flirting with some chick or whatever. He's like, you know, just hang out. And I'm like, God damn it. You're having flashbacks of like sitting by a tree again. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For <laughs> sure. I, and just in general, I'm not like, I'm not super into like small talk bullshitty stuff. I'm not really big into like big group stuff. Like I, I don't mind it, but it's just like, it feels unless it's like something really fun, like hanging out in some big party, watching people drink is not a good time for me. Like I really like one-on-one stuff and just like getting to know people and whatever. I see Tom and I'm kind of venting to Tom. I feel like I've been good about not being a whiny bitch, I guess um, for lack of a, better expression. Don't cancel me. Hashtag no cancel. <laughs> but I'm like, dude, like, what should I make of this? Like, I didn't ask for any of this stuff. Like, I just want to know what I'm doing with myself, just whatever. And he's like, yeah, sometimes like Matt will like get really passionate about something and then I'll feel like he's kind of in over his head. And then he'll like, he'll remove himself from the situation because he feels like obligated to something. I'm like, dude, I got my own fucking thing. I'm good. I just don't want to waste my time. So a couple hours pass. I, I see Matt. I'm like, dude, I'm taking off. Good to see you. Take care. He's like, no, 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 let's go talk. So we go to this table and we're talking. He's like, Hey, I'm so sorry. Like we played our biggest show ever this Glastonbury festival. And he's like, Dom, their drummer's dad died. And it, we really bonded as a three piece and blah, blah, blah. And no matter what, like we're going to record New York and we'll fly you out and we'll just see how it goes. And I'm like, you know, whatever. Like, I just want things to be cool. That's like the very condensed version of like a long conversation. And we leave and I think we're like in a good place. And then, you know, a month later, don't hear anything like similar shit. I'm just like, what is this dude's problem? Like, all right, fucking over this. So now I'm not playing music. I'm really put off by music. I've just been playing a lot of poker and there's like some link for like some new muse song or whatever. And this is when they did this album called like black holes and revelations. And they had this song called like super massive black hole. And I heard it and I thought it was a fucking joke. And I thought the album was just like Muse meets Prince, Muse meets the past. Like it wasn't like authentic them. So I go on the website um, thinking new albums out and they're like, oh, we're proud to introduce our new fourth member, blah, blah, blah. And it was this dude who filled in for their bassist when his their bassist broke his wrist. He was in a band that they grew up respecting and they got him to play like keyboard or whatever. So I sent an email and I'm like, pretty fucked up that I had to learn about this shit, like through a website, it would have been nice if you had like the professional courtesy to give me a heads up. Good luck with your disco rock band. That was it. Oh, shit. Immediately get an email back immediately for like the first time. Come on, Brandon, no need to be like this. You know, hopefully we'll see you blowing us off the stage in the near future or something. Um, and that was my transition into giving people a head on Fremont for deep stack binds. <laughs> I have like 12 things to ask you, but 
one that's like a traumatic story it makes you not want to play music anymore like that that's very fucked up from their like their treatment of you is fucked up it, it seems like a bad relationship or like yeah it was well, just like something i didn't ask for it was like some like yeah someone keep up hey you want to go on a date uh you know like and you're like yeah sure you're really hot and she's like well i'll let you know and it's like yeah. two years of like i'll let you know yeah. it's so <laughs> fucked up like that's so fucked up but one thing uh from early in the story when you're talking about um basically making music an immersive experience and having it be like tastes and smells and everything um one of my favorite bands to ever go see is tool for that reason that like they had alex gray's art like on both sides so it's like you're not just like hearing the music you're like seeing what they're trying to Yes. portray with everything and i was like this is so cool and if they also had like other things i'm like i would like to eat chocolate covered cherries during that it sounds great <laughs> like, i wish man sounds... would like move around a little bit because he just like kind of fucking stands there i'm not, I, I'm not like the he's like aware or, of that yeah. so he's like let me show you some fucked up movies while you watch so you don't have to look <laughs> at me standing there um but yeah i think that sounds really awesome and uh just to follow up to your fucked up story do you still play music or did you like abandon it after that um it's kind of gone through, it's gone in like waves for me. Uh, I got like kind of good about playing stuff again. Um, but I kept finding myself in, um, kind of relationships, uh, where I don't know, like, I don't like to talk about people when they're not here to like defend themselves, you know what I mean? But, um, I found myself kind of with people who didn't, didn't have a lot of hobbies and, uh, you kind of wind up being their, their focal point for the most part. Um, and kind of like, I'd be guilted because I was spending too much time doing these things or whatever. And then, and they want to watch more Netflix when people like stay home all day doing nothing. When you're gone doing stuff, it seems like your time away from each other is worse than it actually is because they've just been kind of sitting there doing nothing like all the time, whatever. So, you know, I would work and study. And then if I have free time, then it would be allocated to these relationships typically, typically. And there was like a two year stretch when I, I wasn't with anybody. And these, these were like my happiest times kind of like, there was a point where I was living in that recording studio, Steve's recording studio for a little bit in between leases and just musicians coming in and out all the time. I could just play whatever I wanted whenever, and I could study and uh, subsequently had a really good world series that year and such an awesome time. And then I was in a, another long relationship where I wasn't really uh, expressing myself through these mediums that make me feel happy to be me. And by the end of it, I felt like a husk of myself and I felt like useless. And, and then we've been split since like December of 2019. And then, uh, ever since then, I guess I've just kind of kept to myself. Like, I don't want to fuck with anyone's life. I don't want to like, I don't want to ruin this momentum that I have, um, where I'm starting to feel like myself again. I'm like studying a whole bunch and playing a whole bunch and like playing music again. Like, working like writing when I can, um, just all these things that make me feel like, uh, you know, I can contribute something positive to this world again, make me proud to be me, which is a hard thing for me to do in the first place. So, um, yeah, so I'm working on it and I, I would feel really bad if I, if I didn't make some music and put some music out at some point, I don't know really what my focus is at this point. Um, but I, it's just nice to do the things that I love. What will you say your time split is right now between poker and music is there one thing to, does it fluctuate do you get pulled more in one thing is poker like a thing that you do only when you're excited about it or is it a thing that you do sort of on a very regular routine like you treat it like a day job and then music is like the more passionate thing well if you if you're a pro and you're trying to play in home games you like you really have to grind hours or whatever and and keep um you, you know you have to you have to do a lot of things if you're being allowed to play in these home games, I suppose. You have to just grind all the tables. And like, if you're a PLO player, like they make you play all the games you're not good at, you know, like it's just a trying to balance the ecosystem kind of thing, you know? Um, and I'm, this has kind of been my poker renaissance in a way. Uh, I also made a lot of really bad investment decisions and, and like bankrupted myself. Uh, I, I had like, 90% of my net worth in crypto at least. And I kind of just left it there. And then there, I mean, it's, it was a long six years. So I'm, by the time I moved here, I was just kind of flat broke again and just like complete rebuild. Um, and, uh, being able to study a whole bunch and study games where there's like not a lot of material out 
um, on and kind of play with everybody from around the world online since they're, they can't go to their home casinos. It's been really nice. And I've just tried try, try to like take advantage of this opportunity since I kind of missed the heyday of full tilt and poker stars. I kind of came in, I just kind of came in a little late. So just taking advantage of this right now and trying to lose my spot in these games. It's been, it's been really good. And it feels nice to be like not stressing too much. Um, I, I, I don't have any crypto at this point. And there was, I think I had like 75 Bitcoin at some point. Um, so that it does hurt, you know, <laughs> it kind of like I literally held on it for as long as I could. And I would just slowly pull stuff out as I was, as I had no money. Mm-hmm. And then eventually like, pulled the last of it out to make sure I could put down my security deposit and just kind of get everything squared away. So yeah, kind of brutal watching this a little bit happy for my friends, but I, and I don't tell much. I feel, I feel like I'm pretty like just chill in general, but like it's the kind of one thing that it kind of hurts. It kind of stings a bit. I just can't like be around it too much. Uh, At least you say you're happy for your friends. I have some, some not quite as nice friends who are not happy for their friends. Who are like death sweating bitcoins that they could buy buy it lower and whatever. But I'm just like that hurt, that sucks really bad. But also you seem to have like a pretty good mindset. It's like well you did what it's not like you were making decisions to sell it because you wanted to like buy new sneakers or something. You like had to use it. You have to use it. It wasn't really a decision, right? Well, it was definitely a good lesson in like risk exposure. You know, if you're gonna get into these things, like I have my opinion on crypto and all the all this stuff. Um, but just in general, like if you're gonna be in, make sure that you can leave it there and you're not gonna fucking sweat it and probably don't fiddle around with it much. You know, if I if I weren't so exposed, I'd I'd probably be in all right shape still. Um yeah. so just uh it was a good lesson in, in risk exposure for sure. And that's that would be like my the main thing that I advocate to to anybody, like probably don't go all in, probably make sure that you can like not yeah. look at it for three years and be cool. Um so when stuff like this happens, like you're not anti-sweating your friends. Like a piece yeah, of shit. I, I was making crypto videos for Doug's channel, Doug Polk's channel. Like we were on crypto for like a year. So I'm researching all these coins and I'm learning all about it. And I was like totally believing in certain things. And, but I like never had extra money. So I was just like, oh, well, I'm not like depressed about it. I was like, if I had an extra hundred K lying around, I'm like, I would have invested it, but I didn't. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right. It's not like I was like, choose like believing in something and being too scared to invest or something like that. So I don't know. I like don't that's what it now, but that's like hard because everyone brags on Twitter. Like so yeah. you, you start to feel like, oh my God, am I just gonna like every time I open up Twitter, I'm just gonna read about people's crypto brags. Like yeah. it's pretty funny. Somebody gave <laughs> me a valuable lesson when I was in my early 20s. Uh, they said something that's always stuck with me. And it's um money is like pussy. You should never think about how much you could have gotten. Yeah, fair. That's <laughs> I'm, I, that's kind of where I'm at right now in my headspace. <laughs> I mean, I've always had the same mentality. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I'm a bit of a ruminator myself, mm-hmm. so I think back to you know my awkward early twenties years. I'm like, oh man, I could have made so many better decisions with the money. Just so many. Almost everyone in poker is like that, though. Like anybody, no one's at their peak except for JMO. Jason Mo just at his peak. He like probably could own us ten times over. Um, there are certain people who just have like infinite crypto. But for most people, though, it's like you're not ever gonna like buy at the lowest and sell at your peak, and you're not gonna invest every dollar wisely. Most people in poker who won their money were like in their mid twenties. You're not gonna spend it wisely. You're not gonna invest it wisely. It's like who cares? I don't know. There'll be more opportunities, right? Yeah. Why is JMO such a dick then? <laughs> what's going on dude that, that that predates crypto that's not yeah, yeah. it's that's Keep that's real. unrelated to his his wealth actually it might have gotten worse since he got more money mm-hmm. um it kind of fries your brain a little bit we interrupt this podcast with a message from our sponsors at run it once the smell of green is in the air at run it once poker from now until april 4th Anyone who creates a new account on Run It Once Poker will receive five euro in SNG Select tickets. Plus, we'll match any first-time depositor's initial deposit up to a maximum of 50 euro in cash. And this is on top of our usual welcome bonus matching up to 600 euro on every deposit you make for the subsequent 30 days after your initial deposit. For full details, head to once.run/ free five that's once 
dot run slash f r e e and the number five. And as always, if you're looking to improve your game, head on over to Run at Once Training, where you'll find the largest library of high-quality poker training content on the web. Created by some of the greatest minds in the game, including Run at Once founder Phil Galvan. Sign up today at once.run/learn, and you'll get free access to three elite videos from high stakes legends Phil Galvan, Ben Solsky, and Jason Kuhn. And now back to the pod. Um, so I want to ask you about some other artistic, creative things. I think a lot of poker players um, are kind of missing that part of their brain and they just become like robots for poker or they're very mathematical. So I don't know. I, for one, have like a creative side that if I'm not doing something creative, I start to feel really boring or like I'm not doing the right thing. So you kind of put music down for a while, but then I feel like it's seeping out in other ways. Like you're decorating your house with umbrellas and you're making moss walls. Um, do you want to talk about that? Like what inspires that? And are you just going to create like the most amazing and weird space for yourself? Yeah, I'm kind of into like, uh, I heard Gene Wilder's place was um, full of like weird like nooks and crannies and secret like passageways. And, and like, I'm, I'm into that uh, for sure. I, it's, I, I feel like I hated poker too until I started doing it as artistic expression a way to like tell a story or whatever especially like limit when you're like trying to get somebody to fold getting like 20 to 1 or whatever like you have to really come up with some creative lines um so i think i just naturally kind of view i i try to like put an artistic twist on kind of everything it's just how like my brain processes stuff um but the umbrella thing was kind of uh i don't know like it feels borderline cliche in vegas like it feels borderline like mirage ceiling that <laughs> so it kind of makes me cringe a little bit, but I really enjoy the umbrellas. And also Can you show I, us. Yeah. Give us a little um, taste of the umbrella room. So these are, this is kind of what's going on with the umbrellas. We got some parasols up there. Um, there was, there was one umbrella in particular. Let's see if I can get it down. It's in a really awkward spot over the piano, but there was the, like I was flat broke and I was spending the last of my money on umbrellas because that's, <laughs> just how I do things. <laughs> it's really backwards. Um, and there was this one umbrella that I couldn't justify buying because it was like too expensive, but it was, it was like my, uh, you know, aspirational umbrella. Yeah. It, like the Wayne's world guitar or whatever of umbrellas or whatever. With that, the like, whammy bar. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, let me, let me see if I can grab it. I don't know. It's kind of awkward. Um, so this is the sprinkles umbrella. This is the one that i I've just always wanted. It's the 50th anniversary umbrella of whatever this company is. Um, like the company that makes the sprinkles you put on ice cream? Well, the company of whatever umbrella company this is. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, I by the time I could afford it, it, it was reduced price by like 65%. So it was great. So I could have afforded it back then, but it was good that I worked <laughs> for it. So wait, so that's I mean, that's actually awesome. So, you know, you had bad luck with the crypto market, but the umbrella market, your investments have been spot on. Perfect yeah, timing. Perfect. Thank you for that perspective. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's funny because during Galphon Challenge, um, I do feel like I kind of gotten an assist here. At the bottom of it was when the influx of umbrellas were coming in. And I would text Phil a new one umbrella like every day. Um, and if he won, he would get two umbrellas. <laughs> so so I feel like that was kind of the resurgence um, and Phil's fucking great. And he helped me a lot during my last relationship stuff. Uh, he and Farah. Yeah. So uh, that's the umbrellas. And then um, Moss Walls, Moss Walls, this apartment setup is really weird, um, but it's fine for me because I have like a lot of instruments, but like most of the square footage is like this long hallways. What really drives me crazy is this blank wall back here. I can't fucking mm -hmm. see it. So that's the next project. Um, it's <laughs> up the blank wall drives me fucking nuts. Umbrellas are ceiling only, are. right? We can't do an umbrella wall. That would not an umbrella sense. wall, but what about like a what about a lady husky hair kind of wall? Uh, like maybe you could make some art with her uh, hair. You could make a wall hanging, uh, like a tapestry. Tapestry, a tapestry. Yeah, mm -hmm. I never tapestry thought of tapestry husky hair. Back. Tapestry of husky hair. Yeah, that is interesting. I do have a lot of husky hair. Like, yeah, I mean, um, hey. that does. That, <laughs> 
I'm, recycling is very like, and I'm in super planet. deep in moss. Like sunk cost moss is a real thing. Like Veronica's <laughs> like, yo, this shit's expensive. And I'm like, no, it's not. Like I've got like fucking five boxes of this. And like the five boxes of moss like covered half of one frame. And now I'm in like thousands deep on in these fucking moss walls. And I'm ready to retire from the moss game for sure. Um, but I do think I might make some for, for that. Spot. Is there like a super premium aspirational moss that like you only, once you've rebuilt like, back, that's like the, like the, the sprinkles, the sprinkle the top, umbrella yeah, moss. the sprinkles of moss. What's the sprinkles of the moss world? Do you have like names and know the varieties and stuff now? Uh, I do, but like, they're all kind of the same price. The, only, the really expensive ones are like the big chunks. Um, like, I'll, like this one I'm working on now, I guess. Um, this is the last one for now, but like these big chunks are, are expensive. And then like the, the little, like the smaller ones, mm-hmm. um, they're all, they're all pretty reasonably priced, but, um, they don't like, like how much does the, what if you just went to a forest? What if you just went to a forest? You can just like, that's next level for sure. I don't gather your own moss. I'm going to lose my spot in the private game. I can't do that, but <laughs> I like, I like, I like your dedication. Um, like um, give us, give us the ballpark, the African shaped moss. You have one that is clearly Africa on that board. How much would that cost? Uh, Oh, just, well, you buy a box, you buy a box of whatever moss that is. And then you find out that like 80% of that box is like crumbled and shit moss. Mm-hmm. And you get like a good, like 20% usage out of each bo- box. Um, so it's really hard. The moss game is such a scam. I've been saying it for years. It really is. (laughs) I should have have done my homework. (laughs) Um, Oh my God. Your dog right now. I'll stop. You have to talk. So it gets back on you, but we need to see this. uh, Yeah. She's a happy girl. She's a happy girl. (laughs) Does she sleep in the bed with you? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And in the morning, like in the morning, she, she wants to spoon. So I like it. And, and I'm, like she usually kind of does her own thing besides the walks, but then in the morning is like cuddle time. She like she comes and flops on me. I'm like okay, we're waking up and scratches. Um, but uh, yeah, so my apartment shape is like really bizarre. There's like this one small little alcove that I thought would be a nice reading nook. Like I have this bench, my grandma's old bench. It's like a, a bench chair, old people furnishing kind of thing i don't know how to describe it but i really like it um and it fits in this little nook and i figured i'd hang the moss walls on each side and put some lanterns and just like a little reading nook i guess i don't know so that was the plan for that um what's on your bookshelf what are you what are you reading or looking forward to reading i don't know dude if you, if you have recommendations ben is great to talk books with because he'll make you feel like you've never read a book in your life because i'm like it, we're in a book club together where anytime someone mentions a title ben's like yeah that one was pretty good or like eh, that's okay i'd read that again and i'm just like what that's <laughs> but, funny like the book right. that everyone told me not to read is obviously the book that i just bought um the body keeps the score and okay. they're correct that this is a very traumatic book to be reading but also like that is the surest way to get me to read something so everyone would be like no that'll upset you and blah 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 so like I don't know. Okay. All right. <laughs> you should join our book club. Join What's our book that? club. Do you you had fun in it, right, Ben? I I don't. We've only like read one book in book club so far. Very I, I skipped it. But so, um, but I'm I I'm enjoying the, the discussion. And I'm enjoying like I enjoy recommending books to people more than I like enjoy reading other people's recommendations. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, I'd make everyone read telling. like Black Black Stallion or something. Like, just do eight hundred pages of nothing. Like, take that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, it's done by showered. committee, Brandon. It's a vote, so you can't just force us to read yeah. something. Yeah, um, um, I keep putting the same book up every single time, and it's like seven hundred pages. Ben has already read it. It's by that guy uh, who uh, Julius Go on Twitter. I just fucking love his Twitter, and I, I love his book so far. But it is like it's a commitment. It's a time commitment. I think nobody's ever going to vote for it. But I'm just being passive aggressive and putting the same book up every time. Fuck it. Nice. At some point, won't they feel guilty and just pick it? Nobody feels guilty for <laughs> for showering your book, Jamie. <laughs> Did you guys get Pizza Hut points for like for reading books back in the day? Yes. And you had the yeah, pin the and they put a little star on each thing. It was the fucking best. The and best. like my family, there was too many kids, we had four kids. So like nothing was ever like mine. And they just give you your personal pan pizza. And I was like, this fucking rules. Yeah. Like, this is so <laughs> awesome. Just be like, you can't have this. 
<laughs> Do they have that in Vancouver? Um, we have Pizza Hut. I don't think we had the Pizza Hut reading oh. books for pizza mm-hmm. program. I don't know what. Brutal. Um, I I just you know read for the love of it, and then school slowly beat that out of me, and then mm-hmm. eventually I started picking up books when I was traveling the EPT circuit again. I was like, oh, this is enjoyable when you don't like have to read it and digest it and yeah. and explain it a certain way. You can just read it and process it at your own pace and take what yeah. you want mm-hmm. from it as opposed to writing a fucking book report or yeah. social or media killed it too though. Like I, I didn't realize well I realized social media eats up too much time, but then I was on a flight recently where I had four hours and they were like the Wi-Fi is broken and I'm like, oh no. Like, I was like, I'm going to be alone with my own thoughts for four hours. This is terrible. This is like actually terrifying. And then I'm like, oh my God, my Kindle, I have the book code book. And I just like read the whole thing. And I was like, if Wi Fi wasn't broken, I just would have been like live updating Twitter and just been like, oh, let's see what this poker player said about their chip count or like crypto brags or whatever. And I'm like, man, this is really sad that I have to be forced away from it and forced into actually like, filling my head with something good. Twitter is the worst. I got so much reading done last year when I was off Twitter and now I am back. Well, you're Primarily back. to promote The Rake, the fine podcast brought to you by <laughs> runitonce.com. And uh, yeah, it just ruins oh. my day every time I open it. Yeah, definitely love-hate relationship with the passive dopamine fixes and done a bunch of... of... What, I've, what I've found is that those easy dopamine mm-hmm. fixes really make it much more difficult to do kind of the gritty work of something like... Exactly. I don't know if you get when you're yeah. making a piece of music... Mm-hmm if you get to like sticking points with it. But I found that when I get to sticking points with, you know, a project that requires a little bit more long-term work and a little bit more pushing through kind of down slopes and and difficult places, um, you, your brain is just like, Oh, let's go over here where the quick dopamine is. And you don't want to do that kind of work anymore. And I found myself much more uh, willing and much more, uh, attuned to slower, slower work when I was off, you know, social media and video games and online poker and all that stuff. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. Like really, cause you're not trying to like dopamine is a good thing. Like, so you're not trying to get rid of it, but you're trying to definitely like rewire your brain, I guess. So like you wake up, you don't look at your phone at all. You do a bunch of arduous things. And then you sit down and you have your coffee and while you have your coffee, after you've done the shit, you can look on Twitter for however long. Mm-hmm. And then like you kind of rewire your brain to, to crave doing the maybe seemingly menial arduous tasks that are very rewarding uh, long-term and that take a lot of discipline, which is obviously also really rewarding. And at the end of the day, you get a little dessert. Um, mm-hmm. But then, yeah, sometimes I find myself waking up, looking on my phone right away again for a bit. I'm like, man, I got to fucking cut this shit out. Um, Yeah, I had a a thing for a while where I was wasting a lot of time. Well, we were playing Mafia all the time, which was fun. Ben disagrees. But um, Greg Shahadi would also record the games for us. And I was like starting to watch them back, too, where I was like, I'm not only wasting the time, wasting the time. Uh, I'm not only playing way too much. But now I'm also like looking back being like, oh, I've made a better decision here or whatever. So I'm like taking two. She was deep in the mafia lab looking for for live tells. And uh, I'm competitive. Um, But then I made a rule for myself that if I ever wanted to rewatch a game, I'd have to do it on the elliptical. So I'm like, I'm doing something good while wasting a lot of time. And that was a good rule for a while. And if I could do that for social media, I would be like the most fit person on the planet because I waste like. 10 minutes every hour just like looking at dumb shit this is a very i was doing the same thing like i would only like i could if i watched something on youtube i had to be like folding my laundry or some shit Mm -hmm. like that i think it's a good policy yeah i'm into it absolutely and and i purposefully didn't start doing werewolf mafia shit because i knew i would turn into the monster that you became exactly It went away though. I play a reasonable amount now, but it's only because I do the thing where like, if I love something, I just like consume it constantly until I don't love it anymore. Hammer the dopamine button until it breaks. A hundred percent. I'm the rat that's just like, do, 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 like for my favorite music and everything. So uh, I'm learning to not do that quite as much, but with mafia, I, yeah, I fucked that one up pretty good. (laughs) It's, it's been a hard year to get your dopamine fix in and 
probably almost all of us had something that we reached for and kept going back to that well when we needed it. But I feel like that's like if I'm collecting umbrellas or whatever for some dopamine fix, like that seems like innocent enough. I'm going to put them on my phone. It's building a big deal. But like, I don't want to be like on, on Twitter, like trying to cater to like my ego or whatever. Uh, something like I, I recognize that I've been on Twitter, like a bit, a bit too much the last couple of weeks and like getting off on someone laughing at my joke or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I just got to like cut that shit down. And I don't know. That's the innocent dopamine fixes that I like though. Like mm-hmm. I really like telling a good joke. But I also tell very bad jokes. Anyone in WhatsApp with me will knows that I'm a dad joke kind of person, like making all the bad puns and stuff too. I think the some of the best dopamine fixes are the dopamine fixes that connect us to people. So mm-hmm. I think, you know, Mafia, Jamie, you used as a social substitute when everything was in lockdown. Uh, I don't know what the Discord server is about. I think you guys play Among Us, Veronica mentioned. Um, I don't know what else you do, but like telling jokes and 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 connecting to people i think is one of the healthiest and best ways for us to get our dopamine i think the problem is with social media it's a little bit not quite commoditized but there's there's a layer of distance between you and the people and and it's kind of it feels like a cheap a cheap replacement for that kind of authentic human connection and it can kind of uh because we get the cheap synthetic stuff it can kill our motivation to to really seek out the really good stuff which is the the deep and meaningful human connection we make when yeah, we tell a fart joke in person very <laughs> yeah very good point i agree and and that's been one of the more joyous things uh from this last year um just as, especially grinding poker like sometimes i'll be playing my games and uh we'll get on google meeting and we'll just kind of like stream our sessions to each other but we've like we've created um names for all cards all like like if you're dealt if you're dealt two to a suit if you're if you're suited you're in a bikini um because it's a two-piece if like if you pick up a flush draw it's called hopscotch you picked up hopscotch and like hearts are called romance and like diamonds are fortune and then like if you have kings they're called kingles and if you have the king of spades is the undertaker so king of spades undertaker pocket kings is kingles three kings is called sexual harassment and four kings is called wrestlemania (laughs) (laughs) yeah so we'll we'll do like some hand history reviews or whatever and they're all in like you know completely indecipherable to the outside world (laughs) it's just all yeah it's all it's all been great and then on top of it i i I stumbled into gay hip-hop at at some point um and I really like the idea of like uh, these super fire beats and like this genre that's inherently like fuck bitches, like get money, clout, clout, whatever. And like every song is about like throwing that neck and sucking dick or whatever. And it like cracks me <laughs> the fuck up. So I like my only poker playlist is like this. It's like it's 80 songs long that I've I've selected. I mean, I've made cuts. It's like 80, 80 tracks deep of like of gay hip hop. And so sometimes like I'll be like someone will bet and then like I'll bluff raise a river and then it'll be like silent. And then all of a sudden you hear like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's been incredible for morale. Just having the Google chat and watching my friends grind. We all just grind together, listen to gay hip hop and uh, and call each other weird, like just make up names for everything. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, that's fun. Does this have anything to do with your love of booty shorts too? Is th- did this happen together? Or have you always loved them? The short shorts? Um, I think the the booty shorts, I think happy accident. They're just like Muay Thai shorts. I, I've been doing Muay Thai for like a long time. Like two, like poker. Never thought I would ever play poker. Thought it was fucking stupid. You know, a bunch of dudes like wearing sunglasses indoors, like trying to hit on their cocktail server or whatever, which, you know, is sometimes, but then like, then you spend enough time, you meet some really great people and, um, and you see like the art, it, you know, that's in poker, you find the music in poker. Um, and then fighting, like I'm not a violent person in general, the idea of hurting someone isn't a pleasant thing for me, but I've always been really into sports and really into, you know, I play basketball and I play football and all these things. And, um, and then I found that the more limbs you incorporate in fighting, like I just did boxing initially and then I did kickboxing and then did Muay Thai. I'm like, wow, the more limbs you add, like the more poker theory really applies, the more game theory applies. 
more and I, I wrote like a little thing on that um and then subsequently like booty shorts come with muay thai and i'm like i really like wearing these <laughs> so yeah it's whatever i don't know i guess that's the progression of that but uh yeah it's funny when when things that you never thought you would ever like wind up being like uh the you know something you spend the majority of your your life doing i guess and enjoying but yeah what do you think would be next um obviously it's like hard to predict since you couldn't predict poker coming to your life at all but like if you ever get tired of playing poker as like the primary way you spend your time what do you think you're gonna do next i don't know i mean money wise i'd probably just do fighting stuff i guess um i really enjoy certain things for for certain reasons like i don't want music to be a source of income like major income i don't want to ever like music is a really pure thing for me every time I sit down and like play piano or guitar or whatever. Like it's just a hundred percent good always, no matter what. Um, and I like that. And that's another thing that I've really tried to focus on is just, I think it's really important for people to focus on in general in, in a game like poker, where like you can just go for forever losing and losing and losing. Um, and a really close friend of mine is like all of his side stuff. It's like poker and then stocks. And then just like all these things that are like money so- related super variants like just crazy yeah. variants like not even necessarily the whole like the, the you know you're focused on money or whatever mm-hmm. like whatever but like it's just stressful every time he calls me i feel like i feel like he's gonna be the person who makes like phones explode like he calls you you answer the phone and like a big like <laughs> little plume of smoke like just pops out from the top of the phone <laughs> and just like dust or whatever but like really making sure that i allocate x amount of time every day to something that has a hundred percent guaranteed return on investment. Mm-hmm. Like, and music is just that, you know, and working out tends to be that too, for the most part. And just mm-hmm. something where like, okay, I lost a whole bunch of money, but like something good came from this day. It just wasn't all some crazy variance fest or just whatever. Something that makes uh-huh. your life feel like you're in control of it, as opposed to having these outside factors that can affect how good it is for you. Yeah. I think that's 100%. important as a poker yeah. player. Definitely. to have some some power over yourself uh, yeah. in other aspects of your life so that yeah. you don't feel that when the down sink, sink spiral that everything else is spiraling too yeah absolutely that the cumulative effect of that is just like really brutal especially when you like especially depending on how you manage your downswings like i want to binge eat shit food and sleep for for forever um and then the laundry list kind of piles up and then it's just, you're like inundated and you just like don't have to do. But, um, but so music, I don't think I would want to be like a main source of income. I could see like fighting stuff. Like just, I used to teach a little bit in Chicago, um, enjoyed it. Um, and talking about like theory stuff, like I would do that for income. Probably I would try to write for income if, if whatever, but I, I, I don't really think too much about it. I'm, I tried to be a good investor person, I guess, and make passive income and torched it. And now I'm just kind of enjoying the rebuild and we'll see, I guess. It just makes me happy to kind of start doing things that make me not resent myself as much as I have been. It's always like the people that everyone likes that is like that are like nice people that like hate themselves the most. I don't understand it, but it's like a very common theme with a lot of my friends or it's like, I don't, I don't know. The people that I enjoy the most in my life are so much more self-conscious than everyone else. I don't really understand it because I'm like, if they like understood how people feel about them, they wouldn't feel shitty about themselves. And then the people who kind of suck always are just so like, I'm wonderful. I'm just sure of it. And it's, it's like a very annoying thing. I, I think trend. the people who are conscientious of others are also conscientious about themselves. Yeah. And the people who aren't also aren't it's conscientious. It's just about sad themselves. though. It's not fair. <laughs> well, life isn't fair, Jamie. I think you would have learned that by now. Let's end the pot on that uplifting note. Yeah, I think we should. I know, Brandon, you've got to go for a WALK, but uh, I want to say thank you for joining us. I really appreciated your time and your thoughts. And uh, this was an this was an interesting uh, interesting pod. I think you have a a very unique brain in poker, and I enjoyed picking it. I appreciate it. I, I'm glad I got the chance to get to talk to people, two people that I really admire. So thank you. Thank you very much.